Jesus is the king who hangs from a dirty cross instead of sitting on a gilded throne. There is a story about some divers who discovered an old sunken ship of the coast of Ireland. It was a 400 year old sunken ship. They found many treasures in it, but the most precious one was a wedding ring. When they cleaned the ring, they could see the figure of a hand holding a heart and an instruction. I have nothing more to give you. This is exactly what Jesus did on the cross as he gave up his life for us. I have nothing more to give you. He gave us his life that we may live. Today we celebrate the feast of Christ the King. Mark Ling in his description of Jesus the King as presented in the Gospel according to St. Luke chapter 23 would say, He is a king who hangs from a dirty cross instead of sitting on a gilded throne. He is a king who did not come to be served, but to serve and to lay down his life as a ransom for all. This is our king who gave up all he had and became obedient unto death, even to death on a cross. Jesus represents a kingship that turns our worldly idea of leadership upside down. In the Gospel according to St. Luke chapter 23, verses 35 onwards, Jesus demonstrates how he is a Messiah and King by granting salvation to the good thief. Luke presents the saving power of the cross in the face of threefold mockery by the people. The Jewish leader said, He saved others, let him save himself if he is the chosen one, the Messiah of God. The soldiers said, If you are the King of the Jews, save yourself. One of the criminals also said, If you are the Messiah, save yourself and us. We see an irony here. By way of this irony, St. Luke is making the enemies themselves confess Jesus as the King, Savior and Messiah. But his kingship is non-violent. It is just and peaceful. His authority is based on the rule of truth, love and mercy. His kingdom is present now, even amidst the chaos and fear happening in the world around us. He is truly a different king. When the good thief requests, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom, there is a recognition of Jesus' kingship that goes beyond this life and there is authority to grant eternal pardon and mercy. That very day, Jesus promised the repentant thief paradise. According to the Bible, paradise is the place for the righteous and it is the bliss of heaven. Jesus thus inaugurates the messianic age by his suffering on the cross. Jesus is a king who saves others, not by saving himself. That is why the feast of Christ the King becomes relevant today. The feast of Christ the King was instituted in 1925 by Pope Pius X. It was the post-World War I period. During the war, over 9 million soldiers were killed and over 21 million were wounded. It was a time when Mussolini marched on Rome and formed a fascist government. It was a time when Stalin ruled as a Soviet dictator. In 1933, Adolf Hitler was appointed Chancellor of Germany. There was fear, a lack of hope, and feeling of helplessness everywhere. So the Pope instituted the Feast of Christ the King as a reminder to all about who is ultimately and eternally in charge. The world today also has many leaders who follow similar paths. In the beautiful movie The Lion King, the young Simba sings, I just can't wait to be the king. As an immature young and naive lion, Simba describes his kingly power as looking down on others, having ultimate authority and not having to answer to anyone or take advice from those lower than him. The freedom to do whatever he wishes and always being in the spotlight. Of course, his character was young and naive and his words were exaggerated, but some of these sentiments may not be far from reality from how we think of rulers today. 
a reflection on Jesus as the king of the universe should help us to understand that these earthly realities are not part of the heavenly kingdom that Jesus came to establish. In the second book of Samuel, we see that David became the leader of his people. But he recognizes that God alone is the true king of Israel. In the second book of Samuel, chapter 5, verse 3 we read, King David made a league with them in Hebron before the Lord and they anointed David to be king over Israel. The letter of St. Paul to the Colossians chapter 1 verse 15 to 20 is generally recognized as an early Christian hymn celebrating the beauty, majesty and supremacy of Christ. Paul mentioned seven unique characteristics of Christ which are very clear indications of his supremacy. Christ says the image of God the firstborn of all creation creator of the universe head of the church firstborn from the dead the fullness of god and the reconciler of all things this hymn was an invitation to the colossians to believe that they had a place in the kingdom of jesus this is what paul says when he addressed the colossians in chapter 1 verse 12 giving thanks to the father who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light all christians thus are also sharers in the kingdom of god by belonging to this king the blessings of the kingdom are available to us in this chaotic world there is focus on jesus our king and not on the chaos and the terror tactics that are trying to separate us from the knowledge of god as truth jesus will lead us to the everlasting kingdom of life for he is our supreme king messiah and savior Let us proclaim with the psalmist let us go rejoicing to the house of the lord